Good day, everybody. It's Stephen here for the Idiot Quilter. Welcome to my weekly episode. This is episode number 138 for October the 26th, 2021. And uh, I called this uh, episode a little bit of everything because I really don't have any organizing theme here today. And you're going to say, do you ever? Well, no, I don't. But anyways, let's jump right into current projects. And my current project is a quilt I just finished for my neighbors. Now, I'm going to show you this in a little bit more detail here in a minute because I did a little video insert of it. Um, but just to let you know that usually at Christmas time, um, our one set of neighbors, uh, very nice people, they started giving us some little Christmas treats at one point in time. And... Uh, kind of caught me with my pants down you know what I mean I really didn't have anything for them and I if someone gives me a gift I like to give them a gift back uh that's just the way I am I sort of feel an obligation I don't know why that is um but I do so over the last couple of years I since I've got into quilting I've made them something I think one year I made them a table runner or I made them some placemats and some napkins I think it was uh, last year I made them a very large freestanding lace uh, angel that could be used as a Christmas tree topper or as a display on a table. And so this year I made them a quilt. Now it's a simple quilt. It's just made with a panel and some borders put on it. And I did some very simple pantograph uh, quilting on it. But I think they'll probably like it. It's just a, a, a laptop type of quilt, a lap quilt. Um, so I'm going to insert that little video about that right here. This quilt is going to be a Christmas gift for the next door neighbors and it was a very simple project to put together because I used a panel and I went into Ultimate Sewing uh, a couple of weeks ago and to pick up some fabric and surely the owner showed me these new Northcott Christmas fabrics that had come in and this was one of the panels and she suggested using this uh, panel to practice on our Lucy doing some thread painting. So I bought some coordinating fabric for the border and uh, I realized I had not yet made a Christmas present for our next door neighbor. So I thought I would throw this one together pretty quickly. So I went into my stash and got the inner border uh, fabric that's there to put around the panel. And then I used the other coordinating fabric that I purchased at Ultimate Sewing and used that for the outer border. And I put it on the long arm and quilted it and I just used a simple pantograph. Um, I don't have really any Christmas pantographs yet. I should get some of those though and uh, I so I saw this swirly one and I thought this might be appropriate. It would work. It gives it sort of a Christmassy look I guess. So I did that and I bound it and it is done and it's just a small throw, a lap size I guess you'd probably call it. Um, but I think that they'll really like it. And I'll just give you a close up here of the quilting. So there you go. You can see it's just a loopy loop kind of quilting. And yes, this panel has lots of potential for thread painting, but I didn't want to spend that much time on this because I got some other projects on the go too that I need to get done. So I think this will be nice. Um, I hope they like it. It's very festive. They could throw it over the edge of a chair or something as part of their holiday decor. And yeah. Um, I think it turned out kind of nice. So that's something you can do with panels. Now I am working on something else. It seems that Christmas things never end. You know, I think I've, I'm ahead. I think I'm done. And then I think of something else. So I was in Ultimate Sewing the other day and uh, getting some fabric, of course. And uh, I saw this uh, Hoop Sisters uh, DVD or CD. Uh, it's been around for a while, I think, this particular pattern, because uh, nowadays most of those kind of things for your embroidery machine, because this is a in the hoop embroidery project, you download from the website. Um, a lot of computers don't have CDs or DVD uh, players or recorders in them anymore. I'm fortunate mine doesn't, but I do have a couple of external uh, CD, DVD drives as well so I just plug those in and, and away I go if I need to copy th something from a CD or a DVD. So anyways that's what I did and this one I bought it creates some wall hanging or uh, placemats and I thought it was kind of cute. So I picked it up and this is what I created with it. Now there are many different styles here that I could have gone with. 
um, that I picked this with the trees and I'm just using up scrap Christmas fabric. I'm working on a second one, but I didn't have enough of the scrap fabric to make it identical to this. So I decided I wouldn't make it identical. It'll be a different one. I did have some problems with this. Don't I always, um, you know, read the instructions all the way through and hoop sisters, uh, patterns come with, uh, a real, uh, detailed set of instructions like I'm talking pages like over a hundred pages uh, well one of the reasons is you can do this kind of thing there are other designs in there you can do multiple different projects with it and things like that which I suppose is really good um, because they're not particularly cheap they're about forty dollars for one of those uh, programs so and that's you know i know they're more expensive than that if you get into their quilts but what i didn't realize was as i was following the instructions and it came to assembly that this was really meant to be a quilt as you go project and it meant you had to create hinges in your sashings and that to put the pieces together i have done that before and i absolutely hate it so here i have the, the the little blocks done and everything and they're already on batting there i put them on paddleizer well what are you going to do because when i started to join them together down in here well the sashing pieces and the borders don't have any batting in them and that's not going to work out really well it's going to make your whole placemat really wonky so i decided to macgyver it and what i mean by that is I turned it down, face down, and in the gully, in here, I cut a piece of battleizer that would fit, and I put that right in here. I did the same with the other sashing pieces and the borders. And then I took another full-size piece of battleizer, full-size as in the size of this table runner, and laid it down on top of it, and then put down my backing fabric. And then I finished doing my quilting. It's just stitching the ditch around the two blocks, and um, it's just some uh, wavy line and, and straight line walking foot quilting. And that'll hold the layers together. And then I bound it. And actually, it turned out pretty good. Because with the two layers of battleizer in it now, it's, you know, it's got some um, strength to it. Um, so, subs what's the word I'm looking for? Substance to it? Whatever. So I'm working on a second one, and as I said, it's going to be slightly different in the fabric selections. Same design, though, but I've decided. So this time, I'm doing the blocks without the battleizer in them. I'm just using tearaway stabilizer. And uh, then I'm going to put two layers of battleizer uh, onto it, and then my backing fabric. And then I'll do what I just did with that one in terms of quilting it. And uh, both of these placemats, or they could be table toppers, either way, um, will be the same thickness, the same weight. But yeah, <laughs> I'm always MacGyvering something. I can tell you that. Part of my problem is I don't read all the instructions. I just barrel right into it. That's not a good idea. And you've heard me say that before, I'm sure. So that I'm working on. And um, what else? Well, um, I'm not working on anything else uh, right at the moment. I do have plans to use one of my UFOs, get it out, get it quilted. And it's going to be a Christmas present for my nephew. And so that's, I guess I'll get to it this week at some point in time. And I might uh, play around a little bit more with uh, the, those uh, files that came with the uh, Quilt Sister DVD. Um, there's a kind of a cute looking wall hanging there that might be kind of fun to make. Or I might just mix and match, make my own. I don't know. Depends on my feeling. And if you saw my blog yesterday, you'll know that although I'm sounding fairly cheery right now, I'm not in a nice place. I'm not in a happy spot. If you want to know why, watch, well, you can watch Stephen and Walter live and you can also watch uh, my vlog from yesterday and that'll explain it to you because I don't really want to rehash it here. Okay, move on. Um, okay, another project that I was going to make and what I'm going to do is switch my camera here so you can see this. Um, here you go. The 
Avatrex Medallion Quilt. Now, one of my subscribers, Cheryl Hogan, she uh, put this up, and I believe you're going to see that today, her version of it, because she actually did it very successfully. No, that was last week that uh, I had that as a quilt of the week. And hers came out great. So I really liked the pattern. So she sent me the pattern and link, and I got it. And I got all the fabric that I needed for it, and I started cutting up the fabric. Well, I did not realize that how many pieces, little pieces, I was going to need to cut for this. So, and it, you had to do it with templates, and you had to make the templates, too. And uh, it was just tedious for me. I'm an impatient person. I want to get the thing done. And nope. I, I decided finally to scrap the project. I thought it was not worth it for me to go through all that. Now, the little templates that you had, of course, are made out of stencil material. So you can't use a rotary cutter with them because you'll just slide off the edge and you'll cut right into it. So I was marking them with a pencil onto the fabric and then cutting them out that way. That was making a very labor intensive uh, experience. I did go online and I found that Elizabeth Hartman, who's the person who designed this quilt in the first place, she had a couple of tips for making cutting a little bit easier, but it still was going to take a long time. So I thought, hey, I have a 3D printer. Why don't I try to make my own templates? Okay, great idea in theory. And if I was somebody who knew how to use a CAD program a little bit better than I do now, I probably could have done it. But I don't, and I couldn't, and I didn't. And, well, I'm not doing this quilt. Before I wrecked any more fabric, um, I salvaged as many pieces of what I had already cut as I could, and I might do something with them, do a, sort of an improv type of block or quilt or something with those pieces at some time down the road. Um, but nope. Now, this is not to say this is a bad pattern. It's not. And I think you'd be very, very proud of it after you got it done because of the hell you went through to put it together. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just not in the mood. Maybe someday I'll return to this pattern. I didn't get rid of the pattern. Um, maybe I'll try it. Someone suggested I just concentrate on maybe the medallion in the center because that's really what attracted me to this quilt. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways you're not going to see this one at all anytime soon and I have a feeling you're never going to see it not from me so anyways again you should read the instructions carefully and all the way through before you start a project okay so that takes me to um what's been happening in the last week well last week last Tuesday we had an all-day session at uh uh, Whirls and Swirls, my long arm dealership uh, with Tracy Russell, the owner. And it was to go over, you know, basic things about maintaining and using your uh, long arm, our Juicy Lucy. And it was great. It was intense. We were there all day, but it was absolutely wonderful. Tracy is an excellent instructor and you've heard me mention her before. And I do have links. I believe I put in links to Whirls and Swirls. In the show notes, let me just check here on my list of things. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> um, but I had talked about them last week, and they were in last week's uh, links there. You just do a search for Whirls and Swirls on Google, and you'll find her uh, website, and you'll find her YouTube channel. So if you have a long arm, you should check it out. It doesn't matter what your brand is. You should check it out. Anyways, we learned an awful lot. And so we did a whole So, uh, so Chatty episode uh, this past Friday all about that. And I have some video clips in there, too, of actually working with Tracy and uh, demos of what we actually did. So you may want to check that out, especially if you have a long arm or even if you're thinking of buying a long arm, I think it would be useful information as well. So that's in the latest uh, edition of So Chatty. Okay, so what else? Well, that takes me to demos. And um, I thought this week I'd show you what my cutting setup is. Um, the central area of this room that I'm in right now, my sewing room, 
which you know used to be my craft room and I've changed into my sewing studio room. I'm never sure what to call it. Studio sounds a little bit like I'm somebody who sells quilts and I'm real professional, like an art quilt or something like that. Uh, the sewing room sounds like, yeah, it's just another old bedroom you've converted over. And it's not that either. So anyways, my sewing area. I thought I'd show you my cutting area and what I have on it and how I have it all set up and uh, some of the products that I use, like my giant cutting mat. So here's my little uh, insert about that. So I thought I'd talk today a little bit about my cutting table. As you know, recently I redid this whole room. It used to be my craft room and now it is completely my sewing studio. And in the center of the sewing studio, I established using Alex units and uh, a couple of the Ikea tabletops and I created this central island, which is primarily my cutting uh, space. Now on one end, I have my embroidery machine. On the other end, I have my principal sewing machine, my Janome M7 Continental. But what I'm focusing on is how I have this whole area set up. And I wanted as much space as I possibly could get for cutting. Now you'll see I have actually several cutting mats here. My large cutting mat, which is a, how big is this one? It goes um, 28, 29 inches, well no, 30 inches by 60 inches. This is a Martelli cutting mat and it was expensive. Now I did get it on sale from Martelli, uh, but with shipping, the exchange rate, because Martelli is in Florida, uh, in the States and of course I'm in Canada. So all that together, this mat was over $200, but I love this mat for a couple of reasons. One reason is the color, not just because it's pretty and it's in purple, but it has two sides. On this side, it's purple. On the back side, if I lift it up, you can see it is yellow. And the markings are very, very clear. Now, why am I using the purple side as opposed to the yellow? Well, I did use the yellow side for quite a while, but I found that it reflected the light a little bit um, more so than the purple side when I'm doing videos. So that's why I've gone to the purple side. So it's just a personal choice. These mats are very, very durable. Um, they're very well made. They are worth the money. I will say that. I don't regret spending the money on this mat. Um, now there has been some talk that you can iron on top of this. Uh, I don't think you can. And why do I say that? Well, when I had my old sewing room, if you look here, this is warped, just slightly warped. Maybe you can see it better from this angle. I didn't iron on this directly, but this part of it was hanging underneath my wool mat and I learned very quickly that using a wool pressing mat which is the kind of thing that's sitting over here um, you need to have something underneath it because when you especially when you're using steam the steam will go right through the wool mat and it is the steam that warped the corner of this mat that's also why I have a position this way because that is an end of the mat I don't really use uh, can you bend it back Maybe, but I have tried on other mats before to do that, various methods, and never had a lot of luck with it. So I do not suggest ironing on this mat at all. Um, even if you've got a, a pressing mat or something that's protected underneath, uh, I just, I don't think you should take the chance. Now, especially when you're spending this kind of money on this type of mat. So. What else is here on my cutting table? Well, over on the far side, you'll see a couple of things. Um, let's move this out of the way. This is just my little cheapo from the dollar store in the tool section container that I use, and I have it out here on my table, just with all my clips. And uh, the thing I like about this, besides the price, like it cost me a couple of bucks, uh, is that it does shut down, and if I drop it, it doesn't spring open, and I lose all my clips all over the place. What I want to show you here, though, is my lighting uh, board. And I don't use this very often, and I bought this several years ago. And actually, I got it before I was really into quilting in a major way. I bought it for crafting. But that's why it has a glass top that is removable. 
and there is also a cutting mat uh, that will fit on this as well and you can see through the cutting mat and the glass mat uh, when you light this up. It is wireless, you can recharge it, it has a USB charger on it and it has about three bright settings on it which is really great if you're doing some applique or things like that. As I said, I don't use it that often, but I have it and it sits here on my cutting table. Um, there are several other cutting mats here and basically they're on the table just for storage or if I want to extend my cutting range. Um, that's just my little garbage can that I'm 3D printed to this and I just drop my little scraps of fabric and things when I'm working into it. And the only reason this wool cutting mat is sitting over here is I don't iron on it it's just another a storage area for that one because I have several wool mats and that's my smallest one more my travel size one um, extra mats as well again this is more storage than anything else but if I need a smaller mat for something I can reach over and just grab it so that's how I've organized my cutting table as you can see and as I said it is really worth the investment to get as large a cutting mat as you possibly can for your area. You won't regret that. And Martelli is a very, very good brand. So that takes me to uh, a subscriber's quilt of the week. And this is sent to me by Barb Olson. And it's a beautiful creation. And here it is. This week's subscriber's quilt of the week is from Barb Olson and we have never had an entry from Barb Olson before so welcome to the platform Barb and Barb writes about this quilt I've only been quilting for about one year and this was the second quilt that I made the pattern is a Moda's Stitch Pink 2020 and I decided to make it in blue for my daughter's mother-in-law who likes blue I love blue as well and this is a stunning looking quilt I would dare say that it's probably a sampler quilt uh, as well because of the different blocks that are in here but for somebody who's only been quilting for about a year this is quite an achievement because some of these blocks are very very complicated for example the Dresden plate right here and this one I'm not even sure what the name of this particular block is but it's a very interesting block. In fact, I don't know if I've ever seen this particular block before. I may have to look that up in my encyclopedia of blocks. Um, I love the use of blue in this. It's sort of monochromatic in the blues, uh, which makes it very interesting as well. And I'm just taking a look here to see what the quilting is. And um, well, I'm not sure if you just did stitch in the ditch on this one or whether that is completed or not doesn't really matter i can see that i think this is just the top at the moment um so i'd be really interested in seeing the final product whenever you get that done barb so thank you for uh, sending this to us to appreciate and if you would be interested in sending me a picture or two of one of your uh quilting or sewing creations or even one of your art um, projects. I've shown people's pieces of art that they've painted or other things that they've created. So I don't just, although this is primarily about uh, quilting and sewing, um, I am very happy to feature other forms of art as well. So you can just send me a picture. My email address is in the show notes below and a little, little tiny blurb, couple of sentences about that. And I'll be happy to feature you here on one of my episodes. Okay, so that takes me to uh, the YouTube channel of the week. And this is by uh, a lady, her last name is Atkinson, and it's called Atkinson Designs. And this is one I stumbled on by accident, but it's quite good. This week's YouTube channel of the week is one I came upon by accident when I was trying to figure out how to bind something on an angle. Actually, it was the Christmas tablecloth that I showed you um, last week. Well, here's what I found. This site, it's called Atkinson's Designs, and this is just a wealth of information for uh, everybody at any level of quilting. So you can see here on the home page, she has a few videos listed here, but what I want to look at is the actual list of videos because she has quite a few. Um, she has a studio tour, 
how to pint size parking, whatever that is. Looks to me like uh, how to make this type of basket for storing things. Um, floating peaks on a table runner. Uh, adjust the bag bottom of your simple sack. Um, how to fold and store your simple sack. Uh, Terry's cutting a circle with roundup tools, uh, hot pads, curbs, all kinds of different things here that I am sure you would like to know. This is the one that I watched and I found it very clear and very helpful on to how to bind uh, any angle. So there's quite a bit here. Now let's just take a look at her playlist and see how she has these organized. Um, she has all of her tips in one playlist, it looks like, right there. So I really think this is a wealth of information. It's something I would not have found if it hadn't been that I was looking for something very specific and this popped up. And I will be checking out more of her videos very soon because I think it's well worth the effort. So that takes me to what's on my vision board, which means something I want to get to at some point in time. Heaven only knows when that will be. And I came across this, I believe, on Jordan Fabrics. It's called Mysterious by Antler Quilt Designs. Um, and I really loved it. Uh, you know, I love going to Jordan Fabrics and watching their videos every week when they come out because that's where I see a lot of really nice patterns. And, um, and plus you get a tutorial uh, about them as well. So here's the one that I'm talking about this week. This week's quilt pattern from my vision board is one that I just recently purchased. I saw this on Jordan Fabrics and um, I just had to have it. I thought it was a really interesting design and it's called Mysterious and it's by Doug Lico or Leco of Antler Quilt Designs. And here you can see what the pattern looks like. And let's just click on that and get a bigger view of it. So for this pattern, you can see there are actually six different ways you can lay this particular quilt out. And if you go here, they show you the measurements for the quilt as well. Now, this is a printed or a digital pattern. And if you go to Antler Quilt Designs, you're able to purchase it right online and then download it. And that's what I did. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to use for fabric yet with this. Um, but I'm sure I'll find something. I think it will make a very interesting um, sort of uh, scrappy quilt, but I might do it in a more uh, controlled fabric selection as well. Uh, it is um, has several sizes. It comes in a topper size, which is 47 inches square, or you can make a throw 63 by 79, or you can make a queen 95 by 111. I think I'll probably make it as a throw. Um, but I'm looking forward to doing this particular design because I think it's really, really different. Um, so, and the one advantage of this too, for the price of $10 American for the pattern, you can make six different, very different looking quilts, depending on your fabrics that you pick and the layout. So check out Jordan Fabrics for a video about this uh, as well. So you get the idea of what I'm talking about. But this one has, has really got me excited. And that takes us to the teaser for the Idiot Quilter Presents. And, oh yeah, I don't have one. I have no interviews. I didn't have any interviews last week. I don't have any interviews this week. Come on. I'm begging. I want to interview somebody. Okay, anybody at this point. Well, I will interview anybody at any point but come on don't be shy let me interview you it'll be fun i promise you okay so that takes me to one of my quilts which is actually isn't a quilt that i'm going to critique today this is a tablecloth will i make another one of these no was this a challenge yes i did this in a class thank god because if i hadn't done this in a class i would never have gotten it done at all I'm very proud of the end product, but like I said, I don't think I'll be making another one ever. So here's what I'm talking about. This week's quilt of my own that I'm going to critique is actually not a quilt, but a tablecloth. 
although you do use quilting methods to create this. This is called the Giant Dahlia Medallion Tablecloth. And I'll be quite honest, this was a bitch. It really was. There's a lot of curved pieces. There's a lot of cutting out. There's a lot of organizing. And there's a lot of sewing. And it has to be very, very accurate sewing to get all of your points to line up correctly. I am very proud of this uh, now that it's finished. But would I make another one? I don't think so. I needed a special set of templates for this. So this put the price of making something like this, if you care about that kind of thing, uh, fairly expensive. Um, it is round and I had a table for this and it sits out on that table now. I have a small bistro table that is round that sits in my rec room and that is where this tablecloth is displayed. I did this in a class and the teacher for this class was absolutely excellent and really you need to have a class in making this because although the instructions for it were very, very clear, I think it really helps uh, to take a class um, for putting this together because as I said, it's fairly complicated. Will I make another one? No, I don't think so. Um, but then never say never. But I am very pleased with the way it turned out. Now, is there any quilting on this? Not really. Let me just blow it up here. As you can see, there really isn't any quilting uh, in this particular uh, piece. I am not sure why I didn't do any quilting. Um, I think because it's a tablecloth, I thought I would just leave it. Um, but yes, by all means, you definitely could do some quilting on this. And I think it would make it even look more spectacular if you did. But by the time I got to putting this all together, I think I was done with this project. But there it is. I've done it. And I took the class because it was going to be a challenge. And it certainly was. And yeah, I learned quite a bit from doing this particular piece. So that takes us to the online quilt store of the week. And this one is called Never Done Quilting. A Canadian store out in, I believe they're in Alberta. Um, I think I tell you where they are in the video. But <laughs> for the life of me, I can't remember what I said in that video. Um, just as an aside here. Uh, when I do these videos, my little clips that I put in, I do them the week before you actually see this final product. Um, and, well, my memory just sucks. Senior moments all the time. But anyways, here's my review of Never Get It Done Quilting Online Quilt Store. This week's online quilting store is called Never Done Quilting, and I believe they are located in Alberta, Canada. Um, this is their front page, and let's just take a look at it right now. Well, right here, something that I always focus on is free shipping on Canadian orders over $100. Uh, there's a note, though, some items require extra shipping costs. So right off the bat, that impresses me. Um, actually, that's fairly low because a lot of places it's $150 or more for free shipping if they offer it. Okay, so they have their main menu up here. It looks fairly standard. They have fabrics, pre-cuts and kits, notions, clearance, gifts, classes, patterns, and contact information. And let's just scroll down and see what else is on the front page. They have a calendar, shopping online, and clearance, and more. Uh, they're welcome. Never Done Quilting is the realization of a dream where a farm wife decided to take her passion of quilting and spend even more time doing it. Never Done is how she felt when looking at her staffs. So she decided, quit her job, open up her own store. It is full of high quality fabrics, notions, patterns, kits, and so much more. So if you've never done your own quilting, or if you have never done quilting before, please come and check us out. We'd love to meet you. Okay, so that gives us a little background information. And they've got some featured panels here as well. And rulers. And, ooh. I kind of wish I'd seen that one before I started my Halloween projects because that one I really like. I think that's kind of cool as a pattern or as a panel. Um, frequently asked questions. They have curbside and in-store pickup, contact information, company links. And here's where I was looking to see exactly where they're located. And they have a map. And they are in Alberta, Canada, in a place called hmm, Basiker. I'm not sure if that's how you say it or not. So they do have a physical store. 
All right, let's get into it then. Let's check out their fabrics. And right off, we have a pull-down menu by color, kids, holidays, prints, panels, flannel, backing, batting, all fabric. Well, let's just click on all fabric and see how this is set up. And so we have backing, we have batiks, we have batting. Um, you can do it by category. You can do it by brand. And they have a few. They don't have a big uh, selection of of brands but they are all quality brands um you know i love northcott so let's just take a look there seems to be 237 pieces in northcott and of course they have stonehenge now their prices look to me 18 to 20 dollars and now if that is at a meter or is that a yard we'll have to check that out in a second but i'm just taking a look here um wide backing is in around the 30 dollar price range which you would expect that um they look like they have some fabric on sale and so prices do vary depending i guess on what it is you're interested in so let's just pick one Let's pick this one that was $18. It's a Stonehenge from Northcott. And let's just see what that's in. Yes, it's in meters. Very good. Canadian company putting it in meters. I like to see that, as you know. Um, Price-wise, not as cheap as I do what I pay for here in my area. But it's still, I think, in the ballpark. All right, let's check out their pre-cuts because you know how I love my pre-cuts. And see what they have to offer assorted pre-cuts charm packs fat quarters jelly rolls of course layer cakes mini charms pods and width of fabric roll so that's interesting with the fabric rolls let's take a look at that because i don't think i've ever seen that on a website before so what does this involve um, six pieces, $24, 10 inches by width of fabric, 10 and a half inches, 10 pieces, $53, 28 pieces, 10 and a half by width of fabric. Interesting, interesting way to market, um, fabric. I have not seen that before. Um, so that's a possibility. You'd have to know your prices to see if this is really something that, uh, you're getting a good deal on let's go back to the pre-cuts menu and let's check out one of my favorites jelly rolls let's see what they have to choose from in this category so we have kona we have maywood and do we have a big selection that's not bad and depending on what you want to buy the prices vary too and what i'm looking at right here in terms of prices look about pretty much standard on that and they have quite a few pages of this so yes a good selection of jelly rolls and i think they probably have a good selection of other pre-cuts as well but let's check out their kits and see what they're offering in those so they have hmm Fabric Creations, No Sew Throw, Cut the Rope, Snow What Fun Kit, Color Wheel. Are any of these really grabbing me? Mm, not really. I mean, they're okay. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're pretty much standard. Uh, and the prices... I would say are probably within the ballpark as well. So nothing there to get me really excited. Um, here's something reversible t-shirt quilt kit, navy, sash in a dash. So yeah, if you're interested in making a t-shirt quilt, that might be of interest. I have no interest in that whatsoever. They do have two pages of these. That's interesting. The Hoffman kit supernova spiral. And they have several of those. Holly, Holly Holiday 
Oh, Christmas tree kit. Hmm. Christmas tree kit. So let's take a look just to see out of curiosity. It's $119 Canadian. And I guess you make a finished quilt 24 by 30. Well, that's a very small quilt. It's not really telling you what's in the box. I guess this is what you're making, which is on the outside of the box. Okay. So that was pre-cuts and kits. Let's take a look in their notion section. Uh, accessories, bobbins, patterns and books, pines, pins and needles, rulers. Okay, all the usual stuff. Go to all notions here. See how this is laid out. Accessories, applique, bobbins. Oh, they have irons. Okay, cutting mats. Thread. Okay, so pretty much the usual kind of stuff, scissors, interfacing. Okay, let's just see what brand of uh, thread they carry. And here it comes, Guterman. Okay, fine. Um, something called Magnifico. I've not heard of that. I wonder who that's made by. I wonder if it's associated with uh, Guterman. Oh, they have King Tut. They have Sulky. But it seems that their principal thread is Guterman. And 250 and 225 for a 100 meter spool. Uh, but they do have it in bigger spools, 3,000 meters as well, $26. Um, okay. So if you're into Guterman thread, this may be the place to go. Let's check out their clearance. Clearance fabric. Their menu system seems to be very uh, user-friendly. Clearance kids, clearance pre-cuts. Okay. Let's see what they have here. Looks like some panels. Not a great deal of a saving. Um, on those. Uh, let's see. Well, okay. You can see that in their clearance, basically the reason why it's on clearance. <laughs> but you know, something that doesn't appeal to me may appeal to somebody else. So to each his own. It's always worth checking out the clearance sections. Um, a lot of panels. Oh, I almost ordered that panel. I uh, was thinking of another quilt for my niece who's into Dungeons and Dragons. Almost ordered it from someplace else. Um, maybe I should order it from them. I don't know. Do I really want it or not? I don't know if I do. Um, but anyways, I know it's there. So what else do they have? Gifts. Gift certificates, puzzles, mugs and glass, all giftware. Quilts for sale. Okay, so they probably are so selling some of their store samples. Let me go and see what they have. And it looks like they have only one, and it's this pink bunnies. I guess that would be a nice baby quilt. Um, yeah, okay. So not much there to choose from. Let's check out their classes see what they're offering well they have classes coming up and yeah some interesting they have about four classes uh going on but what's it say about classes there's really no information let's just click on one to see if it gives you more um are they in store classes i'm wondering i'm just glancing through this yep it is it's in a community hall okay all right so they do have in in store uh you know actual physical classes um and i guess they are following the general covid 19 practice although this is Alberta and they seem to be a little bit looser on the restrictions for COVID from what I have seen on the news but anyways 
there are classes and of course they have patterns so they have some free patterns let's take a look at their freebies i always like a freebie so let's see usually freebie patterns are nothing that exciting they're usually very simplistic ones um and yeah a lot of panels here I guess it's a way to get you to buy panels that they might be trying to get rid of, <laughs> for lack of better terminology. Um, well, okay. That one's kind of cool. Of course, you'd have to buy the fabrics and everything for that. So, yeah, as far as design is concerned, these are basically add some borders to a panel kind of freebies, but they're free. So what more do you want, really? And let's take a look at the regular patterns. And now they have some interesting, that one's kind of interesting. So is that one. I'm just looking for ones that I haven't seen pop up in other places. This one I have seen before. I think the Mini Wonderful Curves is one that I've seen on other sites as well. And, of course, there's the ubiquitous, ubiquitous Jelly Roll Rug. I mean, everybody needs to make at least one of those in their lifetime. <laughs> See if you'll ever make another one. That's me speaking right now. Um, That's kind of cool, too. Looks like it might be probably applique. So actually, there's uh, a fair collection here. Of course, the collage quilts uh, are very popular. I do have a pattern for one. I have not attempted it yet, and I've had the pattern for a while. So they seem to have a wide selection of that. So I would say that um, Never Done Quilting is a definitely has potential for checking it out. And um, yeah, so I might go back and buy that uh, dragon panel. I might. We'll see. So that takes me to the end of this week's episode, but just a uh, advance notice. You will find in the show notes a Zoom link for this month's coming up craft and chat. This is the end of October, last week of October. Next week we start November. And uh, so on November the 3rd, Wednesday, November the 3rd, I will be running my uh, monthly craft and chat where we get together and work on whatever and no drama, just co polite conversation, inspiring conversation, informative conversation uh, as we get caught up on some of our projects for a few hours. So that's this coming, this Wednesday, well, not this Wednesday when I make this, the week after November the 3rd, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the beginning time and we go for about three hours until 4 p.m. But you can come and go as you wish. So the link for that is in the show notes below. So anyways, I hope you have a great week. I hope my week gets better. Again, refer to my vlog if you want to hear my sob story. And um, yeah, and I'm hoping that I bury myself in quilting and that's going to inspire me and make me feel a little better than I feel right now. Um, so have a great week. Go out, make something nice for yourself or for somebody else. Enjoy the process and we'll see you next week for another episode of The Idiot Quilter. Bye for now.